Let me show you some really nice reusable code for Next.js server actions, which I first saw in the Next.js SAS starter kit, and I've used it everywhere since. So thanks Lee Robinson for that. There's two things you often need to do with server actions. The first is validate data coming in, usually from your form. And the second is validate that a user is logged in and can actually run that server action. Well, to do that in a reusable way, we can use a middleware pattern. Now, don't confuse this with Next.js middleware. This is a separate thing. But as you can see in my actions.ts file here, I have three server actions. I have sign up email, login email, and then also an auth action down here. But I don't run any Zod validation or user checking inside of this actions file. Instead, I do that with my middleware here and wrap the actions in this validated action or validated action with user. That's what we're going to be building in this video. But as you can see for the validated action, I simply pass in a schema here. So login schema from Zod. Now this can be any validation library that you want. Code is super simple to change. But you can see that's expecting an email and password. And this has other rules on it as well, like checking that the password is eight characters long. Now you can see that when we actually get to run our action, the data object that we get back is simply email and password with type string. So we know it's already been validated. I don't have to run any Zod validation logic in here or in my sign up email one up here or even in this auth action down here. That's all been done for me in a nice and reusable way. Dry, don't repeat yourself. Then we have the exact same thing when I want to make sure that the user is logged in. I simply just change the name of the middleware to validated action with user. And it's the exact same thing though. It takes in a schema to make sure that this data here has been validated as well. But it's also gonna do a check in the background to make sure that the user is logged in and it will throw an error which we can then handle on the front end if they're not. To do this then, I'm going to store my middleware in a new file. Now you could put this in actions.ts, but since I'm reusing this across a lot of server actions, I'm going to create my own file for it. Now in the Next.js SAS starter kit, this is actually called middleware.ts, but I prefer to name it something like action-helpers so I don't get it confused with the actual Next.js middleware. The first thing we need to do in this file is create a type called action state. Now this is a flexible type that's going to be used to represent the result of invoking an action. It always allows optional error and success fields for standardized feedback. So we have the error being a string and success being a string. Now you could change this to anything you want, like a different object or something like that. Then we also have this index signature here, which allows for any custom data to be attached. Since we're using this with a lot of actions, you may want to specifically for one action, send back some custom data like field specific errors, loading flags or metadata, anything like that. And this just means that we won't get any TypeScript complaints when we do so. Next, we need to create another type called validated action function. This is actually just a generic type alias that describes the shape of the business logic function that you're going to pass into your validated action middleware. So what I mean by that is this type is simply just explaining what the async value is that we're putting inside of this as the second argument. So for that though, to make sure that it can take in any Zod schema and actually successfully pass our data down to the TypeScript type that it needs to be, we need to use a generic. So this line here is just taking in any type of Zod schema. And then T here is a generic to just pass through our return type. The function itself is going to take two arguments. The first one is data. And again, using Zod, I need to infer the type of the schema that we pass through to get it back to its actual TypeScript type of email, password, or whatever it is. And then we have the form data. This is because all server actions have that form data. This is essentially just describing a server action, but we have the data being successfully validated. Then all the return type of that function is, is a promise with our generic of T pass through. Again, if that's complex, trust me, just implement this and then you'll see why this is useful. Now that we have those two types, we can actually create our middleware. The first one is going to be the validated action. This is the one taking in a schema and just checking that the data matches that schema. None of the user authentication yet. You can see for that, we need to create a function called validated action. This again needs to use generics. We're using generics here a lot since this needs to be a wrapper function around a lot of different actions, it needs to take in any Zod schema and also any return type from any server action. You can see again, we're checking the S here is of type Zod schema. And then T again, we're just using that to pass through. You can see the arguments for this function are the schema, which is S, which again, we've just set up up here. And that just means that we can pass through a Zod schema. So you see where I use validated action here. I'm passing in login schema or down here, I'm passing in demo schema. That is the first argument. And that's thanks to these helpers up here that we can do that with TypeScript. The second one is the action we're passing in. So that was the async function that we saw earlier in that login email action. So this is just going to be any action. And for that, we use our validated action function that we created earlier, that type that we set up, and we pass through the generics that we created up here as well. As I said, this looks like a heavy TypeScript mess, but it's actually super simple when you break it down. 
then the actual validated action itself is returning a server action. So we return async. And if you've used Next.js server actions before, you can see this type is literally just a server action. Inside of here, all we need to do is use whichever validation library we're using to validate the data coming back from the form data. So here you can see I do object from entries form data. So we turn the form data into an object, pass that into schema.savePass, which is Zod specific, and goes ahead and passes it for me. Make sure it is perfectly validated. And then you can see here, if the result isn't a success, I'm gonna return error. And in this case, I'm just returning the first error message, but you can change this to however you want. You might even go back and make sure that the error type up here is something like an object that contains all of the errors. But this is just nice and simple for the example. And then we cast that to T as well, as it needs to be the return type of the action. Then if it is a success, so we know the data has been validated, we can simply return action. So we can run the action that the user has passed in to the validated action middleware. And we pass through result.data, which has now been correctly validated. And then we pass through the form data just in case they need it for anything else. With this messy TypeScript code, then we now have a middleware for validating actions. So let's go ahead and actually use this. So here in my actions.ts, I have a sign up email server action, which is using the old way of doing things, where we go ahead and pass the result schema ourselves in each individual action. But let's convert this to use our new validated action middleware. And there we go. So what I've changed my sign up email server action to is simply validated action. And then for the first argument, pass through the schema that I want to make sure is validated. And then the second argument is the action that I want to run. But this time we know when we get data out here that it's email, password, and name. And this has already been validated for us. And the error message and everything like that has been handled by our middleware. You can also see if I add in another argument here that we can also extract the form data if we need to for something else. But this is super nice. Don't repeat yourself middleware. Now, when you use this server action on the front end, as you can see here on my sign up form with use action state, the state that you get back from this hook is going to be of type action state that we set up in that middleware. As you can see, if we want to extract the error message from that, I first check that we do have an error message with state.error here. And then if we do, I simply just print that out as the front end. As in my case, it was either a string or undefined. Now you might've changed this to be an object and you can handle that however you want on the front end using this pattern. That's the data validation middleware done, but what about the user authentication one? Well, that is super simple. The first thing we're gonna do is just copy and paste the validated action function and also the validated action function type. And then we'll paste them down here and change the name of them to validated action with user function for the type and then validated action with user. Obviously this could be any name that you want. You do want to make sure that you change this action type here from validated action function to whatever you just named the above type. And then we also want to change this type up here to include a user argument. So we'll simply say user here. And for me, the type of that is gonna be coming from better auth, but this can be whichever authentication library you are using. Then you can see we're throwing a type error down here in action as is expecting the third argument down here to be the user pass through so that we can use this in whichever server action we then pass into this middleware. Now the final thing we need to do is actually use our user authentication logic. So for me, since I'm using better auth, I'm gonna paste in these lines of code here. All I need to do is go ahead and get the session using the Next.js headers. Then I just check that the user exists. And if it doesn't, I throw a new error saying the user is not authenticated. Now you could return an error message like this if you wanted to display it on the front end. But for me, since I know the server actions that are authenticated should only be accessed by a page that they already needed authentication on, I like to throw an error so that it shows up clearly in my logs and I know that someone somehow got to a page that they shouldn't have. With that code done then, all we need to do in one of our server actions is wrap it with validated action with user. As you can see where we have our data out here, we could first get the form data, but then we can also access the user object for the logged in user. And we know this is going to exist at this point as we've already run the middleware validated action with user and it's thrown an error if they aren't logged in. To show you what this looks like when it's end to end all put together with a login form, as you can see here, my login form is gonna run my login email server action. And that's gonna check that we're using the login schema. If I go ahead and just put something simple in here like demo at demo.com, but then I put a password that's less than eight characters, which my Zod schema is validating against. You can see when I hit sign up, it says password must be at least eight characters as we're sending back an error message using my validated action schema as it's run this code and it's returned it like this object. And then I handle that on my front end. If I change my login email server action to be validated action with user, so making sure they're logged in, obviously not something you do on a real login form, but you can see here if I click sign up now, it's actually gonna go ahead and throw an error for me, which lets me know that I need to go in and sort out how a user managed to even get to this place. But again, you could also return an error message there if you wanted to as well and display that to the user too. There we go, production ready Next.js server action middleware, which means that you have validated data and authenticated users whenever you want them and you're not repeating yourself with the validation code or the authentication code. Let me know in the comments if you like this pattern while you're down there, subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.